What are the chances of Moldova joining or forming a union with Romania? Political elites in Romania, if you will ask them, would tell you the same thing as the general public. Of course, we would have to reunite at some point with our uh, Romanian brothers on the on the um, uh, eastern p- bank of the Prut River. They would have to vote for it. They would have to. We, we want it. And as long as we don't have the support, we will wait. But we will wait for you. We, we, we want you. But the truth is that it's considered to be quite a nightmare, a nightmare for the politicians in, in, uh, in Romania. Hello, my name is Nicholas Furnival. You are watching or listening to an OSW interview. Today I'll be talking to Kamil Tsaus, an expert from OSW on Romania and Moldova. We'll be discussing Moldova's geopolitical status and whether that is likely to change. Just over a year ago, Moldova was considered a rather small state, not a large player, uh, exporter of fine wines, But since the beginning of uh, the Russian invasion of Ukraine, Moldova has moved much closer to center stage and there have been all sorts of different rumors or strange events happening. The one I'd like to start with are the Russian missiles flying over Moldovan territory. What can you say about this? Yes, yes. Russian missiles are flying uh, on their way to the targets in the territory of Ukraine uh, over Moldova for a few months already. Mm-hmm. Uh, Russia is simply, well, ignoring the, the, the Moldovan borders. It's What's even more important, Russia is ignoring the constitutional neutrality of Moldova. Moldova is a neutral state. Uh, it's... Uh, uh, And what's what's even more problematic, Moldova is, uh, military speaking, very weak. Uh, Moldovan army consists of about 5,000 troops. There are no uh, armors. I mean, there are no tanks in the in the in the military of of Moldova. There is there are no uh, fighter jets. Air force almost not existing. And the problem is that Moldova don't really have an air defense. Mm-hmm. Air defense which will be able to. Um, take down missiles which are flying over the territory of the country. So after Russia started to basically ignore the fact that uh, they are violating the airspace of Moldova, uh, Moldova started to uh, seriously think about um, reshaping its military to gain the possibility to actually control its airspace, to defend its airspace, and started what's even more important to rethink or redefine its status of neutrality. Because if you look on how Moldovan uh, Moldovan authorities were behaving at the beginning of, uh, beginning of war, you may see that they, at the very beginning, they really wanted to stay, as they say, to lay low. They wanted to uh, show themselves as a country which, yes, is uh, criticizing Russian aggression, is supporting rhetorically Ukraine and on the humanitarian level, of course, but at the same time don't want to get involved too much because Moldova is aware that uh, if if Russia would be able to actually move through Ukraine, through the southern Ukraine and get to the border of Moldova, there would be nothing Moldova would be able to do. But uh, f- first of all, it turned out that Ukraine is very effective in protecting its own territory, or that Ukraine managed to stop Russian troops. And therefore, well, right now Moldova is secure, it's safe from Russian direct invasion. And what's also very important, Moldova realized that the neutrality status is not really helping. Moldova remained neutral, and yet its airspace was violated. Uh, There are a lot of political uh, threats from Russia um, coming to Moldova, towards Moldova and towards Moldovan politicians. Russia is very much involved in the Moldovan politics uh, when it comes to different hybrids, actions and activities. Mm -hmm. Russia is supporting certain political parties and political organizations in in Moldova, which are uh, doing everything they can to uh, change the power or to change the government in Moldova to change, to, to, to make this geopolitical shift uh, to stop the European integration with the country. So Moldova realized that it would be actually more wise and quite safe already to realign, to redirect, to get closer with the Western partners uh, without entering NATO, without, you know, going all the way into the integration in the, in the military sphere, let's say, but, well, cooperate with the Western partners. 
Okay, so without joining NATO, so not going quite that far. However, um, they are en route to joining the European Union. Now. Yes. Uh, is this popular in the country? Uh, it's quite popular still around, uh, depends on different opinion polls, but around 50 to 60 percent of the general population uh, supports integration with the European Union. The problem is that uh, a lot of opinion polls show that if you will allow Moldova to join few different organizations at the same time, they would a lot of people would vote for it. So they would be like they would like to be both in the European Union and, for example, in the Eurasian Union with Russia at the same time. But in general, generally speaking, a better part of the general public is supporting integration with the European Union. With NATO, no. And it's not only because of the neutrality status, which, as I said before, is uh, enshrined in the Constitution and therefore, well, cannot be changed that easily. Easily, It would have to be voted on the referendum and so on. It's really impossible right now. Uh, but uh, integration with NATO is still perceived by the large part of the Moldovan population as an uh, unnecessary trigger, which could um, push Russia towards some more aggressive actions toward Moldova, whatever it could be, it could be in, in the current situation. You mentioned uh, that maybe they would like to join the European Union, maybe the Eurasian Union as well. Uh, could you tell us something about the pro-Russian protests that were spoken about regarding Moldova? How how much that is Russian propaganda and how much it's true? Well, there are Russian uh, there are protests against the pro-Western government uh, in Moldova. They are taking place since uh, uh, September 2022, quite regularly. They are organized by the so-called Shore Party, party which was created by Ilan Shore, and this is why it's, it bears his name. Uh, Ilan Shore, who is, <clears throat> uh, let's put it mildly, very controversial politician and businessman. Uh, he was already in 2015 uh, sentenced uh, for uh, more than seven years in prison for being involved in the embezzlement of one billion dollars from the Moldovan banking system in 2014. The crime of the century. The so-called thefts of the century, yes. A very, very popular thing. I mean, one of the things which made Moldova popular in the world, unfortunately. So there are wines and there is also theft well, of the century. Pluses and minuses. <laughs> yeah, yes, exactly. Uh, so he was, he, he is perceived as a person who was one of the mm, more, most important people uh, behind this whole process. And recently, actually, he was uh, sentenced by the uh, uh, Appeal court, uh, again, for uh, twice as uh, much as before uh, for the same thing. So, But the problem is that actually he ran away from the country in 2019. And since 2019, he is in Israel because he is Israeli citizen as well, not only Moldovan. Uh, he lives in Herzliya, probably. Uh, but despite the fact that he is away, um, he still is running his party. He is participating in those protests uh, on the screen of the TV, which is usually being, you know, uh, shown uh, to the protesters um, during the process. Protest. He is probably the most active anti-governmental politician uh, in the country. At the same time, his narrative is not. Um, is not pro-Russian, openly pro-Russian, or even not anti-European pr pr openly. No, he is rather uh, perpetuating this strange mixture of pro-Soviet, pro-communist pro sympathies. You know, we will re-establish uh, re co-houses, for example, so collective farms. Mm -hmm. We will, I don't know, uh, in, uh, will provide you with free uh, public transport, right? Also, all those populist um, ideas. At the same same time, he is, for example, running a network of uh, Merishore shops, which are the so-called social shops uh, with the subsidized goods, like very basic mm -hmm. goods. And with all those mm, yes, pro-Soviet, pro-communist sentimental narrative, he is gaining popularity among the uh, poorer part of the of the, Romania, of the Moldovan population, of the pensioners and so on and so forth. Um, those who were unlucky uh, when it comes to the process of the transformation, economic transformation of the country. At the same time, he's saying that we 
we as a small country need to be friends with everybody. We need to cooperate with everybody. We need to be close with the European Union. Of course, we are not an enemy. We, we want to cooperate with our Western partners. At the same time, we cannot afford to be uh, enemies of Russia, really. We need to cooperate with Russia. We need cheap gas from Russia. We need Russia to keep its uh, labor market open for our uh, labor migrants and so on and so forth. Let's be friends together. Uh, there is this Russian saying, "Давайте будем дружиться," which means let's let's be friends. Let's be friends, and this is actually the main idea behind that. But there are no doubts that he is supported by Moscow. Like obviously he is. He is being promoted by the Russian uh, state media, including Solovyov and people like that, and Simonyan, Margarita Simonyan. He is being named as the leader of the pro-Russian opposition of the of the um, uh, anti-Western opposition in Moldova. And thanks to this mixture of being, uh, you know, let's keep the peace with everybody and we will give you everything for free. He is gaining popularity and support. Right now it's about 10 to 15 percent, which mm. is still not much. And it's not much because a large part of the population still perceives him as, uh, uh, well, quite corrupted person, let's let's put it uh, mildly, right? I mean, he is a guy who is associated with all those scandals I meant before. Plus, his narrative is very naive. I mean, he's the definition of populist politician. And a lot of people, even those who are pro-Russian, who would be willing to cooperate with Russia, simply look at him and don't believe him. Like, okay, I mean, he's, he's a joke. He's not a real politician. For example, he recently he promised to build an air, airport in Gagauzia. It's the region to the to the salt uh, we with mentioned before, Turkey Russian people. speaking with pro-Russian population inhabited by around 105,000 people. Um, and let's 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 just say that there is one airport, international airport right now operating in Moldova. It's the one in Kishinev. And it basically works for the entire country. But he wanted to build another one for the region inhabited by 150,000 people. And you would have to see the um, 3D animation and all those, you know, visualizations of this airport to see how grandiose this project is. So, as I said, this is the uh, definition perhaps of Perhaps some of our viewers can uh, request a link in Probably, the or we can actually maybe put it somewhere here, yeah. <laughs> uh, we will see, but, uh, b b b but that's not all. He wants to also open the uh, Gagausland, I think this is how it's called. So, the uh, amusement park. Mm -hmm. uh, f of course, for free as well. And this is uh, something which is uh, promising uh, not only to gag of people, but also uh, he did something similar in Orhe. There is a small 50,000 city uh, not far away from Kishinev, which is run by the politicians related to his party for many years already. And he actually managed to open this amusement park there, or Heyland. Uh, he managed to organize free public transport there. He managed to uh, renovate the main streets, to pub street lights and so on and so forth. It was kind of a, his visit card, right? Nobody really knows where the money for those uh, investments came from. Yes, there are some ideas about this. Uh, but anyway, he did it. And therefore, he's trying to uh, perpetuate this idea that if he will become the prime minister, if he will become the president, if he will become the leader of the country, he will m made the whole country as Orhe is. And this is basically one of his uh, ideas as well. So that's the, that's the person. It, it does sound like uh, a pyramid scheme. <laughs> a little bit, right? <laughs> uh, but the protests which we are mentioning are not that large. I mean, there mm -hmm. are about... Uh, up to, but up to really 10,000 people participating in the protest, which is really not that much, given the fact that Kishinev is inhabited by around 800,000 people, and given the fact that a lot of those participants of the, pro of the of those protests are brought from different villages and smaller towns by buses mm -hmm. paid and organized by Shore Party, it's really nothing. So it's the first delivery on the promise of public transport being free. Actually... <laughs> It, it really, it actually how it works. I mean, a lot of those people are coming to Kishinev to those protests, not only because they want to participate in the protests, but also, well, they are able to come to, to the capital for free, do some shopping, maybe uh, go to some office, you know, do some things which will have to, which they would have to do anyway, but for free. Plus, it's kind of a social event for a lot of them. I mean, people in the smaller villages and smaller towns in Moldova, usually, uh, particularly those older ones, you know, they don't really have money to go to the the city uh, to, to see what is happening in the capital. And if they have a chance to go there with their colleagues, with their friends to meet there, 
they will go. They will go. Yeah, they will participate in the protest as well. Not to mention that some of them, at least some of them, are paid directly for, for participation in this protest. Even though. Yes. So that has been a little more fascinating than I <laughs> predicted. I have just one more question. Um, I don't know what the scenarios would be, say, if Moldova joined the European Union or not, or, or if it would de facto happen. What are the chances of Moldova joining or forming a union with Romania? I would say that it's rather highly unlikely in the foreseeable future. First of all, uh, because of the lack of proper support for this idea. As I said, 30 to 35 percent right now of Moldovans support this idea. And what's interesting, even those Moldovans who are uh, who consider themselves to be Romanian, and there are a lot of them, such, such Moldovans, uh, not necessarily support the idea of reunification. They think to themselves that, okay, yeah, we are Romanians, as Romanians on the other bank of the Prut River. But well, Moldova have got a little bit different history. We've got our minorities, Russian-speaking minorities. Um, we've got uh, a little bit different path of development. Uh, it would be probably easier and better to actually keep our independence. We want to have it. We want to be able to run our country the way we like it. Then, in the future, probably we would join the European Union. The border would disappear anyway, and we will be simply functioning with our Romanian uh, brothers and sisters, uh, like in the one country, but with our Moldovan independence. Um, so this is the first thing. And the other thing is the Romanian attitude. And this is even more interesting. Um, because before the war started, about 60 to 70 percent of the general Romanian population was in favor of reunification. Uh, if you will ask basically any Romanian on the street in Romania, he will tell you that, of course, I mean, the Republic of Moldova is a historical part of Romania. Reunification should happen at some to at some point. There are no doubts about this. You can find this uh, slogan on many walls uh, or many stickers all around Romania, which says Besarabia e Romania, which means Besarabia, the region of Moldova, Moldova, which is today Moldova, is Romania. So, like, generally speaking, Romanians are totally in favor. It's the historical uh, justice thing. It should be reunited. But at the same time, if you will ask them whether guys you would like to actually pay for the reunification, because, well, it will cost you. I mean, it will cost Romania as a more wealthy state a lot of money. Uh, and a close analog could be, say, uh, the reunification of Germany. Of Germany, for example, of course. And Western Germany were, uh, well, economic powerhouse. And Romania, well, it's it's developing quite good, but still it's hard to to compare those two countries. Um, and Germany is still paying for the unification. So if you will ask Romanians whether they would like to pay for this, whether they would accept the fact that the GDP per capita will fall, that there will be some additional expenses, uh, then the support falls from those 60% to around 30%, so about half. So it's not, I mean, it's, it's good to be romantic, but when money are involved, Romanians are far more pragmatic. And it's also visible right now, if because when, when the war started, the Romanians started to think, first of all, about their own security and about their own safety. And right now, the number of supporters of reunification in Romania fell to around 30%. Because Romanians are simply afraid that if they would like to pursue reunification in this time, in this moment, this could only uh, create unnecessary tensions. This can only, I don't know, push Russia or those uh, different pro-Russian organizations in, in Moldova to organize some some um, uh, protests, maybe to organize some I don't know, coup, some, some you know, separatist movement, wherever, right? That it could be dangerous. So it's not a good moment. This is one of the answer, one of the most popular answer when, when it comes to those opinion polls regarding reunification in Romania right now. Yes, no, and it's not a good moment. So it's not a good <laughs> moment. It's one of the most popular one. And uh, so this is about the population, but there is also uh, the most important level probably, and this is the level of the political elite. Political elites in Romania, if you will ask them, would tell you the same thing as the general public, that of course we are, we are interested, our Romanian brothers, because Romania does not recognize Moldovan, Moldovans as a nation. Romanians consider that Moldovans are Romanians from the other side of the Prut River. So they would say that, of course, we would have to reunite at some point with our uh, Romanian brothers on the on the um, uh, eastern bank of the Prut River. But 
of course, it will require their uh, their 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 goodwill. They would have to vote for it. They would have to. We, we want it, and as long as we don't have the support, we will wait. But we will wait for you. We 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 want you. But the truth is that it's considered to be quite a nightmare, a nightmare for the politicians in in uh, in Romania. They they are most of them at least. There are a few parties which are radical parties, um, but most of those mainstream mainstream politicians are actually afraid of being that, that they would be forced at some point pushed towards this reunification that they would have to pay for the process of reunification that they would have to solve all the problems uh, political social economic problems related to reunification they don't want to hear about it really not to mention that it will mean that certain part of the moldovan political forces including those pro russians would be kind of you know sucked in the into the Romanian political system they would need to be somehow uh, adopted and Romanian politicians don't want it as well the same works for the Moldovan authorities uh, Moldovan authorities uh, are not promoting the idea of reunification they are not saying no those pro western of course but they are also not saying yes they're trying to you know say eh, we will think about this in the future we'll see we'll see what our population would say we'll see what Romanian would say but most of the Rome Moldovan politicians despite of their ide ideological background they don't want to lose independence I mean it's always better to be independent it's always better to have control over your country um, than to be part of some wider organism with a capital somewhere else uh, mm -hmm. and therefore I don't really see any uh, let's say reasons for the reunification or the chances for the reunification in the upcoming future okay so, Camille, thank you very much. Thank you very much. It seems that Moldova always was fascinating. Of course. We didn't know about it. And now we do. It is. It's one of the most fascinating countries in the world, really. Thank you. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this conversation, please like and subscribe.